Hey you guys, it's Monica and welcome back. Today we are going to be making a fall resin tray. So I picked up this mold from my favorite place, Amazon. It's like, like a weird little geo-shaped square rectangular mold. It came with these two gold handles. It's not from Let's Resin, um, even though they do have one, but they only have one with silver handles. So I just went with a company um, that I had never heard of and picked up this little mold. And it's like an 11 by seven mold. And I'm gonna be using the Let's Resin two-part epoxy. It's the three to one ratio. Um, this one, cause I know you guys have been wanting to see me use different resins and everything. Um, so I did pick this one up. And so I think it was maybe like 18 bucks. And they say you can cast up to three and a half inches deep. And so that's why I went ahead and picked up that one and so i'm going to be using four glitters you know glitter is my medium um and so this one is mocha it's a beautiful deep chocolatey brown the next one is old gold and this is just a really nice middle of the ground type of gold color and then the last one is going to be leather patina it's just very autumnal it's very rich um so yeah it's like orange burnt orange but like red but bronze but copper it's one of those like kind of all around shades oh and we have one more third place and this one is just a true bronze type of color and so like i said this is a three to one ratio so you will need a scale unless you have plans just on mixing the whole um lot but and so I'm just gonna use my scale. I have a couple of these little scales. Um, and I'm actually gonna weigh in grams because grams is more accurate than trying to weigh in like ounces or anything, especially when you're doing small amounts like this. So I'm just showing you that I am gonna be measuring in grams today. And so three to one, the internet said that you needed about eight to 10 ounces. So I'm gonna do 12. And so I'm gonna do 240 grams of part A. And then I didn't know how much 240 grams was gonna be, but you can see I'm almost to the top of the cup. Um, and then 80 grams of part B. And as always, you guys, make sure you're following the safety instructions that are listed for your resin. If you get this one, you can get the safety data sheet on their Amazon, like the product page. If you look down under like technical requirements or something like that, it'll have the safety sheet and tell you what the recommended safety precautions you should take is. So this cup was too small. <laughs> so I did have to go f scramble and find a bigger cup, which I did. And then I just went ahead and split these off into four different batches. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the glitters and just eyeball them and put them into each of the cups. So as always, you guys, no rhyme or reason, as much or as little as you want. Um, I will show you something that happened during this process. Um, and so, like I said, just make sure you're, oh, I do want to mention that per the instructions, I mixed it for three to five minutes and then I let it sit for 10 minutes to let all the bubbles come to the surface because this way you don't have to hit it with the heat gun. So this one says no need for a heat gun, especially so you don't risk messing up your mold. Um, and so I just let it aerate for 10 minutes just sitting out on my desk. And I will say that this resin was very, very low odor. Like it was, I'm not gonna say it was almost, you couldn't notice it, but it was, it was very slight. So I was very impressed and it makes me definitely want to try the Let's Resin, like their normal one-to-one -one ratio resin because it was so much low odor compared to the Illuminolites. So I just wanna put that out there for anybody thinking I can definitely say for sure that this one is a low lower odor probably pff, honestly 85% lower odor than the Aluma lights like the Aluma lights you can walk in the house and smell that bad boy or walk in your garage I have a garage too um just walk in wherever you're using it at and you can smell it whereas this you had to be in the room up up on up on it to notice that it was like you could smell it so yeah I just 
talk through this whole part <laughs> but um I just poured it in here in any fashion I chose I really like the like slanted diagonal kind of look um when it comes to like rectangular shapes like this and so but it's completely and totally up to you if you want to do horizontal stripes you can if you want to do half and half if you want to do like circles like you know like a geode actual like a geode circular shape you can it's you guys do what your heart feels because if you don't like it you can always just make another one <laughs> So yeah, so I came back in about an hour later to check on it and you can see I have this glitter floating on the top. So what I had noticed when I was mixing was that the glitter wasn't floating like, and it was, I think it's because it was just a very thin consistency. Um, and it takes a long time to thicken. even at this point, it's still pretty watery and it's been an hour. Um, that the glitter just wasn't, even when I was mixing it, I noticed that the glitter wasn't floating and wasn't staying so essentially what happened was all of the glitter went to the bottom so essentially all the glitter is on the bottom layer and then it's really just pretty much clear resin on the back side of this and so that's just something to definitely be aware of and I definitely wanted to let you guys know um and so like I said if you want something like it doesn't look bad or anything I still love the way it looks because it sank in the pattern that I put it in but just be aware that if you use this one that is gonna happen if you use glitter. So pretty much what I went back and did because I am anal and I didn't like the way it looked just out there floating is that I did everything that I could to try to get as much of that glitter off as I could. In retrospect, if I would have waited about another two or three hours when it was thicker, it would have been so much easier for me to get up. But my anxiety wouldn't let me just wait. I had to get it up even though it was in this very thin consistency and I risked just smearing everything together but yeah I definitely want to leave this part in so you guys kind of like got the full deal of what happened and so you can just be aware if you choose to use these exact products which I will link below and then that's me going back with it's actually a snowball shovel I have a snowball machine in my house um but yeah I use them for crafting now because I just use a spoon when I eat snowballs <laughs> that's the New Orleans in me I can't help it All right, you guys, so it's been about two hours, and so I feel like it's set up enough where I can put the handles in. And so it does come with screws, and, you know, if you have a drill, you could just make sure you have the correct bit and drill through the epoxy. But I'm like, you know, my husband could easily do it for me, but I'd rather just stick them in <laughs> the epoxy now because, again, it's going to be for decoration. It's not like I'm going to be serving breakfast on this tray every morning it's going to be sitting in my home as a decorative piece and so I figured I can just stick the handles in the epoxy and that'll hold it in just fine and so I'm going to get out my handy dandy ruler to make sure I have them kind of where I want them and so what I'm going to do is just measure it up and then this is a good thing about like working on like a garbage bag like you see me doing because then you can just mark where you want your handles to go and so I'm going to make lines I'm gonna make lines on the garbage bag um, just where I think the handle should go so I'm gonna make lines like essentially on all sides of the mold to kind of help me make sure everything is equidistant and everything is even going in both directions um, and so you're gonna just see me I made the ones on the top and I'm also gonna make the ones on the bottom and you can kind of just guesstimate if you want you guys but the engineer in me won't just allow me to kind of <laughs> eye where I think the handle should go so that's why I had to break out the ruler. But again, if you don't have a ruler, just eyeball it. All 
And then once I get everything lined up, I'm gonna just grab the handle and just stick it <laughs> where it's supposed to go. Um, but just make sure before you do this part that your epoxy can hold it up. The good thing is even if it's not quite set, you're putting something flat on the flat surface. So as long as your surface is flat, it should be able to stand on your work surface. So just remember that. And just make sure you're being just extremely gentle when you're doing this. Your hands are going to be coming very close to the surface of the epoxy. So just make sure that you're careful um, so you don't kind of get epoxy all over. You can always wear gloves um, as well when you're doing this part because you are dealing with uncured resin. So just something to remember safety wise. And so at this point, all I did was just tweak them a million times to make sure that I liked how they were lined up and then I'm gonna just let it rest and set and mind its business. So it's been a full 24 hours and this is how the tray looks and you can imagine my dismay when I picked it up and it bent. <laughs> and so I checked the cure time and it says the cure time is 24 hours may change depending on weather and the temperature in your house. My house is usually somewhere between 70 and 73. Um, so I don't know if it was just cold or what the dealio was, but as you can see, it's not set. So I'm going to give it another probably 18 hours. And if it's not hard and non-pliable like I like it, then I'm going to have to do something else. So I'll be back and let you guys know. Alrighty you guys, so I am back 18 hours later and I'm very happy to report that it is fully cured. And so I'm not sure if it was like an altitude thing. I am at over 6,000 feet up here in Colorado um, or house temperature, whatever it may be. But I would definitely say this has somewhere between a 24 and 48 hour cure for me at least. Um, yours may be fully cured in 24, but mine was not. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead, loosen up those edges so I can pull it out the tray pretty easy. Make sure there's not going to be any snags along any of the edges. And this is what we're working with. So I love how it turned out on both sides. And you can kind of see a little bit where the, the handle marks are, which is completely fine. No one's gonna see that. Um, showing you the thickness of it. Excuse the stuff in the background. I'm always doing other crafts. Um, but yeah, you can definitely see the, the glitter looks so beautiful. Like I'm so satisfied with the color combination and the different colors. And honestly, this is just giving me straight neutral vibes an additional autumnal vibe so I just really love it and that's the size you're gonna see and I love how this looks as well so overall happy customer I'm really glad with how everything turned out so I'm just gonna show you guys really quickly how I decided to set this up in my living room and so all the other little things you see me use like the candle the leaves the little glitter pumpkins they're all from the Dollar Tree um, so I'm a Dollar Tree decorator <laughs> um, everything I've, I'm gonna decorate my house with is from the Dollar Tree and so I actually decided to move this up on our fireplace in our living room. So just showing you guys how it looks, spreading the leaves around and using those extra pumpkins. So if you like these kind of videos, please don't forget to give this a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I would love for you to join the Periodic Designs family. And don't forget to leave me a comment and I will see you guys in the next one.